Don Jean here and today you'll see that we have a guest for the show and this is Todd Hopkins, uh, founder of Office Pride Commercial Cleaning. Some of you may recognize Todd, he's been on the show a couple of times before so yep. thanks for joining us again Todd. Good to be here. Today we're going to talk about employee communication and how poor employee communication can cost your cleaning company time and money. Yeah. So Todd, I think this is a topic that not a lot of people really think a lot about uh, because they're so busy running the day-to-day you know, -day -day operations of their business. And I think the time that they do really think about poor employee communication is when something goes wrong. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it's almost <laughs> too late to be thinking about it. Yep. Uh, you've already incurred the cost. So it's very important, Gene, to be intentional. We, we have to practice at communicating well and be intentional about communicating well and very uh, clear to our employees what it is we want them to do and, and how they do it effectively. Right. I can think of times um, in the past with us where, you know, you go to send someone off to strip and wax a floor and, you know, you're saying go do this office in this great big building that's got all kinds of floors all over the building and then they go do the wrong floor or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, I, had a, I, had, I hired somebody to roof a house for me one time and uh, I had a, a rental house and I, he called me and said, job's been done, just put the check in the mail, and I, I had written the check, was getting ready to mail it, but I had never used this contractor before, and I thought, I'm going to just go down and make sure he did a good job. And I went down, and, and my house had still had the same old roof on it, <laughs> and I'm, I'm just stand, standing there in disbelief, and I look next door, and that house had a brand new roof. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it, it turns out that uh, uh, his crew got there, and they roofed the wrong house. And you know, I'm sitting there thinking, did I give him the wrong address? And so I called him and the first words out of my mouth was, what address did I give you uh, for the house that needed the new roof? And he gave me back the correct address. So what happened, Gene, when they, the crew got up to the street, I think there was a car parked in front of the house that they were supposed to do. They, the next thing you know, they were just leaning the ladder up against the wrong house. The supervisor didn't check his notes and uh, went from memory and, and did the wrong house. Yeah, Very costly mistake. Oh boy, I guess. <laughs> well, we've had that happen with floors too and, and all kinds of things. I mean, it could be, I, I guess when I think about having to redo a floor where maybe they waxed over dirt and the client comes in and notices that, you're thinking, man, I got to do double the work now because we got to restrip it and sure. refinish it. And then the numbers are turning in your head. But I know that there's other cases where maybe the money isn't really the first you know, thing going on in your head like it would be having to redo a job. What other kind of costs are there? Well, not just money, but time. Time is so important. We all have a, a limited amount of it, and so it's very important that we use it wisely. Uh, there was a study done one time that said 40% of executives' time is spent solving problems or handling problems. And I know that's true for me. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very big issue, you know, and the study went on to say that the root cause of those problems was in poor employee communication. Back in the beginning, we didn't tell somebody something they were supposed to do or communicate it clearly or how to speak to a customer and the next thing you know, we're putting out fires and we're using 40% or more of our time doing those things. So my question to you is, what could you do if you had 40% of your time back? And if that's not motivation enough to, to try harder to communicate better, right. then uh, I don't know what would be. We, and we had talked about another example as well. Um, you mentioned a new employee comes to the a building. They're kind of looking up at this great big building that they have to clean and, and thinking about how much time it's going to take. That they're in a little bit of overwhelm. Right. And you go in and you, say, you tell them you're trying to ease their mind a little bit so that, saying it's not going to take that long. It may take three and a half, four hours. So what's the first thing that they think? Yeah, they, they heard you say four hours. So uh, it's, it happens to all of us, you know. I mean, you take an employee out there to show them the building and, and they say, there's no way you can clean this building in three hours. And, and, and then we're afraid they're just going to walk off that, that night. And so we cushion it a little, just like you say, oh, it's three, maybe four. And they heard four. And all of a sudden, your, your budget went up from three hours a night to four hours a night. Now, if you put the math to that, if you're paying somebody $8 an hour for that part-time job, and let's say with the labor burden and you know, the taxes and insurance and all that, it's, it cost you 10. So one hour a night, that's $10 that night you just lost. If it's five night a week job, that's $50 a week. 
uh, time 52 weeks a year, that's like $2,600. For one employee. And that's just for one employee. Exactly. I, I mean, if you had 50 employees that were you were losing an hour on each night, that's $130,000 a year. So uh, it's very important that we're very clear in the beginning. It may take you four hours the first few nights as you get to learn it, maybe even five the first few nights. Uh, but by next week, you'll have this three hours and, uh, and you're good to go. Right. So what are some ways that we can communicate better with our employees? Is there anything, any type of verbiage or anything that we can do um, to help it, you know, help us help communicate better with them so that they're more clear on what they need to do? Well, I think uh, the, you mentioned verbiage. Uh, really, we communicate three ways, verbal, written, and then by our actions. And so a lot of times uh, we do a decent job of saying the right things. And, and, and sometimes we, we do have things clearly in writing and we have an orientation packet that's all in writing. So everything's definitely communicated in writing. But it's our actions, the night we train them that speak so loudly. I mean, they're never going to be any better than we were the night we trained them. So if we skip things or if we tell them, oh, we can get that later or another night, then that's what they're going to do down the road. So I think we have to remember, even though we're saying the right things, we have it written, that we also have to demonstrate what we want them to copy by our actions. Exactly. All right. Well, there's a lot more that we could talk about on this topic. I mean, this could go on for hours. So, yeah. um, but I really wanted to hit the fact that it really does cost you a lot of time and it costs you a lot of money if you have poor employee communication. So give that some thought and think about how you can communicate better with your employees on a day-to-day -day basis. Make sure that they really understand what you're trying to tell them. Don't mm -hmm. assume that they know because that gets you into trouble as well. Yep. So, all right, well, thanks, Todd. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. <laughs>